Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, it has occurred to me that it is mid-November and I need to get going on filming my year-end things, one of them being this video, which is my journal and planner lineup for 2021. The end of the year has really snuck up on me, as it does every year, I think for many people. And honestly, I'm gonna let you know right now, my journal setup is not changing. It hasn't changed for many years. It's been very simplified. Um, what I'm about to show you might seem like it's a lot of notebooks, but some of them, a good portion of them, are kind of ongoing. And so it, you know, in the end, uh, isn't necessarily stuff that I use all the time. And I will get into that in more detail. But uh, here I am at the Kitchen Peninsula uh, recording while my daughter naps, so hopefully I can do this all in one go. Currently, I'm drinking the Juniper Mint Honey Tea by Tazo. Tazo. Uh, highly recommend this one. It is delightful. It's fragrant. It's so good. It's an herbal tea. To me, it just smells like the mountains, and I love it. Uh, it's pretty much my favorite tea find of this year. Okay, journals, journals, notebooks, planners for next year. I'm just gonna go into the planner systems because, uh, you know, there's really not much to it considering where we're at right now with global events. I'm keeping it very simple. I did not have a budget for planners. Um, my budget for planners is pretty much non-existent, so I pretty much went with the cheapest. I did not get a Hobonichi Weeks as I wanted to. Um, I did not get a Loish term to go back into bullet journaling, mostly because I'm not at the point in my life where I can dedicate time to formatting, even if I do the simplest formats. So I kind of needed something that was already formatted for me, even if I have to fill in the dates of. So I got this on clearance at Marshall's. It's just the smallest, I think it's like a pocket. I don't even know what size it is. The sizes are listed right here. This is the size that I went with and it's a, got a month at a glance, undated, completely undated. Even the tabs are undated. So I can just use existing stickers that I have to use it uh, and mark it. Uh, it's a week on two pages. Nothing really fancy. It's, uh, I think every week has got a little something different. So the week on two pages, but then there's a little box right at the bottom here that says thankful for. The next one is blank. Um, the next one is word of the week. And then a little graphic. And I got it for $4.50. Um, I can't get it any cheaper than that, so I'm glad I waited on a planner, um, but, uh, you know, it's not the most ideal planner for me right now, but it's going to work because uh, my planner for my personal life is pretty just functional, doesn't have to be super pretty. This type of paper will take gel pen pretty easily. And uh, I plan on using my Paper Mate Ink Joys for the majority of my planning, but uh, if you follow my, me, you know that I'm not really strict with my planner. So um, I've never used a Happy Planner for a planner planner. I had a Happy Planner for a while, years ago, where I was interested in kind of like the Erin Condren setup, and that was lasted only for a while because I just got so caught up in the decorating, but this is just going to be purely functional. So that's, that's my planner for next year. And then I have this planner that I also got at Marshall's and it is going to be my meal planner. It's the same concept as uh, my meal planner right now, only this one isn't dated. So I do have to date the tabs. But uh, what I like about it is it's got the vertical setup broken down into three different rows. 
And what I like to do is I have the top portion as my breakfast, middle is lunch, and then the bottom's dinner. On the side, I have all my prep notes. So if I need to thaw things out, I need to make notes of specialty ingredients that I need to buy that I don't have on hand in my pantry or in my freezer or fridge, I make notes of that there. And then, um, Typically there's also like a section right before the month starts that could either be for the previous month or the month following. And what I like to do here is um, in my current meal planner, I use this section for keeping track of my grocery expenses. So I'll just actually list out all of my um, receipt totals here. And then I just add it up at the end of the month to see where I'm at in spending for groceries because that's probably our biggest budget killer right now is groceries. So that's kind of how I use this page. Um, so there's a bit of prep work for these two planners just because of everything being undated, but that's okay. Um, once I do it, it's done and I could probably find existing stickers to tab out the months and all of that. So there it is. Um, unfortunately, I just noticed that this is falling apart, the lamination. So I'm wondering if I can take my heat gun to it and seal it up. I have no idea. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to like washi tape it together because it's doing that. So that's unfortunate, but whatever. It's a meal planner. It's not going anywhere. It's staying home. Okay, my main journal. That's going to vary. You'll typically see me post about my traveler's notebook, the camel. This is my absolute favorite cover. I've pretty much uh, used, I pretty much use this one exclusively if I uh, go back into traveler's notebook size journaling. But uh, my personal journal will just vary with whatever notebooks I have left that I'm going to use up. Um, so it'll be this and then several other notebooks until I use up all of my existing blank notebooks. And you can see more about that in previous videos that I've posted where I do check-ins of things that I'm using up, all of that. And I'm very happy that I'm getting through that stack. Uh, it's reduced greatly this past year. So that's my personal journal situation. The other main one that I use pretty much daily is gonna be my five-year journal. And then this year I get to start this one and this is a Q&A a day for moms, 365 questions. So what you do is you date it yourself and then you just write one or two lines a day. I don't know if I'm going to necessarily use the prompts every day because, um, you know, different things might happen that might not fit, but uh, I do find that now that I have a child, um, my little summarized lines are pretty much about my daughter. Just little tidbits and memories of things that she's done and said and, you know, all of that stuff. So I'm excited to start this new five-year journal and it's the same size and format as my previous one that will end this year. So that'll kind of sit nicely next to each other eventually. So that's gonna be my new journal that I'll start in 2021. And then this one you've heard me mention as well. This is the Olive Traveler's Notebook, which I use to journal for my daughter. I keep a journal for her. And this is what I use to document her growth, her funny moments, her cute moments, everything, memories. I stick in tidbits of things that have happened, um, stickers of things, just all sorts of memorabilia. It's like my scrapbook that I will give to her one day. And I don't necessarily journal in this every day, but this is more like a weekly slash monthly thing that I do where I kind of recap certain moments. And the, this is something that I use in conjunction with the five-year journal. My five-year journal is something that I can use to recap. So when I'm looking back and catching up in this journal, I'll use my five-year journal. So those are great tools to have in reference to each other with 
And so the camel is dedicated to my daughter's journal. So that's another main one. And then the other personal main journal that I don't use every day, but I use lately, weekly, is my inspiration journal. I have found myself just clipping out so many magazine images, beautiful pictures of things that inspire me that I didn't necessarily want it to bog down my personal journaling. Um, so I needed a place to kind of keep them all together and that's kind of what this has become. Uh, this is a Daiso notebook. I'm kind of already halfway through, so I'll, you know, sometime next year I'll have to find a new notebook to do this, uh, to, to make a new one with. But I just pretty much put in images that I like and I stick them in there. And that's kind of it. Nothing special, it's just images that speak to me. I like to flip through it once in a while. If I'm just feeling a little bit of a, you know, writer's rut. And it's just nice to look at, reference, and uh, a place to just keep all these beautiful images that I love. And um, there we go for that main portion of journals and planners. Now, the next few notebooks are things that I've had for years. They're kind of ongoing, or at least for the past year. This is the Brown Traveler's Notebook, which I use to document things for my husband. So it's basically the same idea as uh, the journal for my daughter. I know get, people have asked me, like, how do you journal for your husband? Well, it's basically, imagine how, you know, people like to do photo albums. That's basically what this is. I'll print out photos, I'll summarize, you know, things that have happened, certain dates that we've had, memories, and I recap them all in a notebook that will eventually go to my husband. So, because I realized I don't really do photo albums for the family, uh, I think that's a goal of mine is to do photo books uh, one day, but I haven't gotten there yet, especially because I don't have a working computer. So I kind of have to rely on just self-printing photos and all of that, um, but same concept as my daughter's journal. It's just that this one is for my husband. So there's that. And that's one that I don't do all the time, but it's just been ongoing and I do it when I can. Um, another one that's, I don't know, it's kind of, it's not becoming relevant anymore. Last year I kept a notebook specifically to keep track of my purchases um, or things that I wanted to buy and I wrote about why I wanted to buy it and do I really need it. So it was kind of like a way for me to work out my purchasing habits. And I understand why I purchase things. And especially if I've, you know, while I've done it for a whole year, I've come to understand my spending habits, my reasonings behind it. Um, I've started to see a pattern of like what I like to buy during different emotional times in my life. And I started to fill this spare notebook up with that. Um, as you can see, I just kind of like stuck in images. So it's a journal where I just try, like here, I wrote down books that I wanted to buy. Um, I'll sometimes add stickers for no other reason. And then I'll, I like to add in like images of things that appeal to me that I wanna buy, but I probably won't. Um, I love sticking in images of very expensive things that I know I will never buy. And I'm only a few pages in, I'm not very far. And I don't know if this is gonna be something I will do into this year, next year, year after, but uh, at the moment, that's kind of what this is. I haven't filled it in in months, honestly. And so if it's not something that I plan on continuing, this will just become a regular journal. I'm just gonna use up the notebook at some point for some reason. But uh, I had that going for 2019 and most of 2020, but uh, this one's kind of on the if, uh, it's on the fence. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with that one, but that does exist in my notebook stash. This isn't the journal per se, but it's something that I've kept since 2015, a long time ago, 
of books that I've read. Um, this is before Goodreads app came into my life. I don't really look at Goodreads much and sometimes I just like to track reviews for myself, not for the public. And that's what Goodreads is, it's more public. But I like to just write down the title, the books of the books that I've uh, finished, the date that I've finished them, my little review on them. And I just like it uh, because I've always kept track of these. I don't remember where my old one is, but um, it's just been nice kind of tracking since high school how many books I've read each year and I kind of sum it up at the end of the year. So um, ongoing, not really eternal, it's just kind of like a little notebook that I track. So I don't really count it as an actual journal. And then finally, this is going to be a new one. I've pulled out my largest notebook. It is a lined notebook, unfortunately. I kind of wanted it to be a more of a sketchbook, but I don't have a sketchbook in my stash. And I still wanted to use up a notebook from my, um, from my shelf. I'm going to need a notebook to track and plan for my next Halloween costume. It's a very elaborate costume. It requires a timeline. It's full on cosplay. And uh, if you followed me for a while, if you've seen my recent videos uh, and my Instagram post, I take Halloween pretty seriously, which is funny because we have nowhere to go. We, we weren't going anywhere, by the way. We were practicing social distancing. Uh, we, we dressed up, <laughs> we got our photo, and we changed back into comfy clothes. It's been that way for a few years now. We don't really have Halloween parties to go to, uh, but we like planning for it. We love doing it. It's just kind of a little fun tradition that my husband and I have started to do. We've done it for a few years now, and the next year is gonna be a, a huge challenge. Uh, I wanted something that was more than just makeup and an outfit. I wanted something where I have to build it from scratch. So the next costume that I have requires a lot of attention to detail, a lot of planning. I have to map out when we need to finish certain things in order to stay on track, in order for the costume to be ready to be revealed on Halloween. So like I said, full on cosplay, it requires its own little notebook to plan and sketch out ideas because it involves making things, there's props, there's tools that we need, all of that. I'm very excited to start it. So uh, that's what this notebook is going to be. I wish it were a sketchbook. I wonder if I have a sketchbook somewhere, maybe like buried somewhere in the basement. If I do, I might switch it up, but there's gonna be a notebook dedicated to that project specifically because we have two costumes that we have to build from scratch. And I'm so excited. And that's it. Those are all of the notebooks that I have going on for next year. It might seem like a lot, but like I said, I really only have two to three main notebooks that I turn to daily slash weekly. Everything else is just kind of like a here and there sort of thing. My journal setup hasn't really changed. I'm thinking of downsizing my craft room a little bit more because I work well with having less rather than in abundance. Uh, but as you will always know that I have my beloved Daldi uh, Sunstar flat pouch. I don't remember what it's called, but I talk about this all the time. You know I love it. Uh, I'm in no way sponsored or paid to talk about it. I just genuinely love this pouch. I am not cool enough to be sponsored, but uh, this is just always close, always near my other journal that I use. Um, it's in my little basket that I carry around in the house. We use it all the time. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, oh, let me know if you guys, or what, if any of you have used the new pouch. They came out with a newer one where it's kind of, it looks like Neapolitan ice cream where it's got, you know, one color here, one color here, one color here, and then there's like a front pocket slot that you can kind of stick things in. Um, so let me know if any of you have tried that um, and if it's advantageous to have that pouch. I'm not interested in buying one, 
because I already have this one and I love it. It functions perfectly for me, but uh, I'm interested because I recently saw that on the site. So there we have it. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know what you guys plan on doing for 2021 for journaling. If it's simpler than mine, if you've got, you know, main journals plus some ongoing journals, I'm sure enough, I'm not the only one, but uh, I hope you are all doing well, staying safe, happy journaling. Thanks. Bye.